let's see. So now we are going to create an app, a uh, blank app, and connect from scratch. Then we can comment the, the basics of Power Apps and teach step by step. Let's go with here in the make.powerapps.com. So this, you can already start this video from here if you don't want to see how to connect directly. I think that's what most people want. So just start building. This would, would be a good, good point. So let's go here. Home, you can create blank app. So as we mentioned in the beginning, we have blank canvas app. That's the, this one that we have the drag and drop. The based on Dataverse, that's the model driven and the website, that's the power pages now. So you mm -hmm. can click here on create, or you can also go to the apps, go to new app and choose a canvas, or you can go to create. It's the same thing as the home, so blank app. So I'm going to create. We have two formats here, tablet and phone. Uh, so uh, those are the two options. If you want to use on computers, I use tablet. If it's intended only for phone, then you can use phone. But I like to go with tablet and then do modifications if necessary, or even make it adapt to both screens. That's a little bit more advanced, but it's also possible uh, to make it uh, responsive, responsive, let's say. So let's call it inventory. No, not inventory, asset request, for example. Then it will, it will just create a blank Canva. Can, the Canva is this thing in the middle. That's why it's called Canvas app. So this is the Canva. Mm. Right. So here's the interface to create the app. Uh, we can create new screens. We already have screens, uh, some models to, to use. We can insert a lot of things here, such as buttons, labels, text, inputs and other things. So in the insert, we have the the components we want to add. Uh, there is this view tab to see the data sources we are connected, the media we imported, collections, variables, and other things we are going to learn, actions, and also the settings here. So a lot of things to cover, but let's, let's start from the easy thing. So, here in the screen one, so this is the empty screen where I can drag elements to this screen. So first thing is this, is learn how, what elements we can add, what do we have? So if we go to the insert pane, we see, for example, a button here. So once I click, it will bring the button to the screen, to the Canva, and I can drag and place whenever I want, change size, change several, several configurations here in the right pane. So the button here, for example, we have the text. We can change, for example, to click me. And it will change the text in the button. We also have this drop down here where we can access also all the configurations, all the parameters. We can also find the text in here, for example. So text, the same click me. So I can change things here too. Uh, and also other things such as resizing, dragging, dropping, double clicking to change the text too. So there are several different ways to do. So the idea is to select elements and bring to the Canva. That's the first thing. Uh, how would you get started, Leo? What would you te teach first for someone who is just learning Power Apps? An idea, what, what show next? Yeah, I think the main thing is to, to know the the interface and where are things so you just show this that and mm -hmm. maybe the next step is uh, understand how uh, to connect the data and okay. after that understand how to interact with the data right so we can add as many inputs and things as we want here such as text and so on. But as Leo mentioned, we need to also add data. We are building an app to interact with data. So uh, it doesn't make, make much sense having an app that does nothing. So here in the left, we can see this data pane here where you can add data. 
So we have also the others we can cover, but let's go to this data. So we are going to connect to a data. In this case, is the same SharePoint list as we demonstrated before. So here, in order to do that, I'm going to click on this pane, data, then add data. Here, I have uh, several data sources. It shows the tables here from the dataverse in my environment. That's another source of data. It's the database for the platform. But we have uh, several connectors here. We can connect to Office, to SharePoint. Uh, there are several. There are more than 500, I guess, right now. Yeah. What is that diamond, really? OK, the diamond means it's a premium connector. So we see we have those without the diamond. That means they're just custom, just normal connect connectors and the diamond. If it has the diamond, it means you need a Power Apps per user plan or a pair app plan or a pay as go plan. So any paid plan that gives access to the premium connectors and premium features of the Power Apps. In this case, you're connecting to SharePoint, so it's not premium. If you search here, share, I cannot talk and search at the same time, SharePoint. We see that it doesn't have the diamond, so it's not premium. Then it can connect. But there is one thing here uh, that we see that the Dataverse tables doesn't have the premium, but it's premium. So if the app has a Dataverse connector, it will request a, a license. Should have, should have the premium icon here. Yeah. So I'm going to click on SharePoint. And I already have a connection, but you can create a new one. Clicking here, it's a simple step. But I already have, so let's click here. Then we need to connect to the site. As we see, our site doesn't show here because it's very recent, so it didn't load here yet. But we can copy the URL for the site. So it goes up to the name of the site. So this is the URL for the site. Or if you click on Home, then we are going to have only the URL you need. Let's copy, paste in here, and connect. Now we are going to connect to the same list as we connected to the pre in the previous app, so Asset Manager, and click. So we already see it in here. We are not using, it doesn't show anywhere, because we need to configure the app to show this information also to connect uh, to the, the lists and create, edit, and so on. And OK, we already have the data connected. Let's just uh, quickly see this information. Let's just show how to show it inside the app. So one way to do this is using a gallery. So here in the insert gallery, we have several forms of gallery. So gallery is, let's say, uh, if you go to a museum, you have a gallery of arts. You see all the, the pictures in there. So it's the same thing. It's a gallery. You're going to show all the items in here. So I'm going to select this vertical. It's the model I use the most. It will give some uh, sample data with some text here. That doesn't mean anything. But if we click in the gallery, it will show the data source for us to connect. Since we have the asset manager connected in the app, we can click here and show. Or if it, if this pop-up doesn't show, we can go to the right pane here and see in the data source and select here also the list, the asset manager. So I'm clicking here. It just brought the data to the gallery, and we are already seeing this information. So the gallery is one of the main things of the Power Apps, the, one of the building blocks. Uh, all of the apps use gallery. Um, almost all of them, I'd say almost 100%. And the gallery is intended to show items. So once we connected the data source, we see it here. Each line of the gallery, it's an item. So if we change anything here in the first item, this is, is where we edit the, the gallery view, the how it shows. It will reflect in the other items. So we only need to change once and it will reflect to the items that are in the other part of the gallery. We cannot even change here. You can only change here in the top. If we select the gallery, click here in the edit icon, or just click somewhere, 
we can do changes such as positioning, changing sizes, changing colors, and so on. Right. And I think well. that's yeah. I think that's the reason why uh, this part of the gallery is called template because uh, you do for, for the first model and everything is going to, to follow the template that we're uh, making the, the changes. And I think a, a nice way of uh, summing up the idea of a gallery is to say that it's similar to a table, but it's much more flexible. Uh, so we are, we're using this control uh, very often to show a tabular data and instead of using a table because it's much more flexible and we can organize the, the information the way we want good point yes we have we we even have the data table in here we can also add and show data so let me show but i don't like this one so i'm going i added data table clicked on asset manager it will bring some columns here and show the information See, it's really it's good to see uh, the information. It's quick. It even has this uh, and the scroll bar here. But some mm -hmm. things we cannot do, such as showing pictures, adding uh, action buttons inside. For example, we could have we could click here and go to other page, go to the edits or to the view pane. But here mm -hmm. uh, there is no way to do it because it's more fixed the way we show things here. So sometimes I like to do a gallery and make it look like a table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. So for example, here we could have the gallery rip, just drag here, change the size, and position things like in the table. For example, the image. We can mm -hmm. put the name, the status, and but side by side and make it look like a table. So right now we have mm -hmm. only the, let me see, the title and the status and the, and the image, but we could add more fields here. That's already one thing we, we can teach because people will need to edit the gallery most of the times. It's, it's just not connecting. For example, here, we want mm -hmm. to see serial number and other information such as, for example, condition notes. And here we only have the image, the title, the status, uh, is it possible to show more information here Leo, or just this? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can show as many information as you want. Uh, and you can do other kind of things like uh, maybe creating conditions and using icons. Uh, you can use whatever object you want inside a, a gallery. There's few objects that you can use, but most of them you, you can use on the gallery. Yeah, that's great. And in the table, I cannot do nothing. I can do nothing like that Leo just said. So let's mm -hmm. go with the gallery and delete this table. Okay, just delete it. As we just saw, I just changed the side of the gallery, moved the, the text around to make it look like a table a little bit. Uh, let's say we want to see the condition notes here. So I'm going to select the gallery, select anything inside it, just to make sure I'm inside this first part of the gallery, that's the template, and go to insert and label. So once I insert the label, it will already bring some information. So it does this by default. So for example, now it's just brought the manufacturer dot value. Oops. Since this manufacturer is a choice column, uh, we need to access the value by uh, the dot value. This is how we access choice columns from SharePoint. Uh, here, there's one thing that we need to notice that's uh, this item. So each line here is an item. And if we want to access the information, we need to call the this item because it will know that we are talking about the item for this line of the gallery. So it's mm -hmm. called this item for, it doesn't matter the data source you connect, you always need to call this item dot, then the information you want. So in this case, it showed the manufacturer. Uh, we can keep in here and keep adding labels. 
it will bring other information here too. In this case, now it's this item dot model. Uh, so let, oops, I just added a button, let me delete. See, now I just had the gallery selected and then I clicked on label. It just brought this label, but outside the gallery, that is what I was mentioning before. And we need to have a pension to click inside any element of the gallery and then insert. Now it's just brought the asset type, but I, I won't keep adding more and more and waiting for the notes to come. So I will just change the text of this label. So this is one property of the label that shows text and we can change the text it shows. So instead of this item dot assets type, I'm going to go to this item, delete everything else, add the dot again, Power Apps shows me the options here inside. So I like to do this instead of typing and getting, getting it wrong. So I see here condition notes. Since it's a text column, it shows already the text in here. And I can see the information that it's replicating to the other items inside the gallery. So we add it in the first item and it shows in the others. This one doesn't have a condition note, so it doesn't show anything but the label is here empty. Right. Uh, any comment, Leo? Just yeah, I, I think... I, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think this is uh, the beginning. So when we say... Uh, uh, I don't know if in English is the same term as we say crude in Portuguese for creating, mm -hmm. yeah, reading, deleting, updating. So this is uh, the reading thing uh, that we just learned how to read the, the data. And I think it's uh, one of the, the, the first steps to, to understand uh, in order to, to build anything on, on the app and start to interact with, with the data. Yes, uh, I always like to visualize the data first to see what, mm -hmm. what the data is in there. So going manually, mm -hmm. adding some things, some data to the data source as we just did. And then I like mm -hmm. to show in the app before I start creating or editing. So I already know that mm -hmm. the connection is correct and the data is showing. Mm -hmm. Yes, in this case, this is the process I like to follow uh, after planning the app as we mentioned before. Mm 